a crook problem. And that's when you have two parallel lines and the transversal that joins them has a bend in it or a crook as we call it. Now there's a procedure that I gave you on your worksheet when we did on this, but since this is just a review, I don't actually have the procedure written out, so we'll go over it. The first thing that you're going to want to do is wherever there's a bend or a crook in the transversal, you're going to want to put a dot there. So in our first example, one, we've got a bend in the transversal right here, so I'm going to put a nice big dot there. The next thing that you want to do is through that dot, you want to add a line. But not just any old line, you want to add a line that's going to be parallel to the two existing lines. So I'm going to do that the best I can. I'm off a little bit, but I think that's good enough. To indicate that they're parallel, I'm going to actually add an extra arrow on it. Now, in doing this, what we've done is we've split the X. We've split the angle X not exactly in half, but we've divided it up. There's a little piece up here, we'll call that 1. And there's a little piece down here that we call, and we'll call that two. So the, the original X is now split up into two parts, one and two. What you want to do now is use the properties of parallel lines and search for things like alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, same side interior, same side exterior, and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to ask that you do is focus your attention at the top of the, the top half of the diagram. And if we think of this as one portion of our parallel line, and we think of this as in the other portion of our parallel line, and this piece here is our transversal, and I'm making all of this orange here, I can ask the question, what is the relationship between this angle that's 40 and this angle that's 1? This angle that's 40 and this angle that's 1. Now, if you look and you kind of outline this, hopefully you see a Z. And whenever we see a Z, that's a giveaway of alternate interior angles. And we know that if the lines are parallel, that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if the top portion is 40, then the bottom portion is also 40. Okay, now I'm gonna focus on the bottom portion of the page. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna color this little piece green and then color this upper portion green and I'm going to extend the length of the transversal by making that green as well. Okay, so now if I point to the angle marked 110 and the angle marked is 2, we can think of the relationship or the classification for those angles. They both exist on the same side of the transversal, the right side, and they're both in the interior region. So they're same side interior angles. The theorem that we have for this is that if the lines are parallel, then the same side interior angles will be supplementary. And the supplement of a, an angle that it's 110 is 70. Now, remember that the original angle X was uh, marked by angle 1 and by angle 2. So it's been marked up a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to just sort of outline where the X had been. Angle X was over here. So I'm just sort of coloring that in and not doing a very good job. Uh, so remember, X went all the way from here to here. It was all of this stuff. So there was a portion of it that was 40 and there was a portion of it that was 70. What that means is is that x is the combination of them both. So x is equal to 40 plus 70 or 110. Now I guess it's worth noting that in this problem which I just made up, the fact that this big angle here in pink is 110 is just a coincidence that this is also 110. I don't want you to think that there's a, you know, that these answers are always going to be the same because they're not. Okay, let's move to the next problem. In example two, there are two bends in the transversal. So I'm going to put my first dot at the first bend that I see, and I'm going to put my second dot at the second bend that I see. And now I'm going to draw two lines, one through each dot. And I'm not just going to draw any old line. I'm going to draw a line such that it is parallel to the two existing lines. Let's see if I have better luck with this than on the problem number one. 
This is actually looking pretty good, so I think I'm gonna snap that in. Yeah, that's looking great. Now I'm gonna do it again for this line here, and let's see how we're doing with this. Oh, nice, amazing in fact, amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna put some arrows to indicate that they're parallel to the existing lines, so they're gonna get a double arrow, and that's gonna get a double arrow. Okay, now let's keep in mind that we have a right angle over here, as indicated by this little box, and when I draw this red line, it's dividing that right angle up. Now it's not splitting it in half, it might be, but it's not necessarily splitting it in half. So what I'm gonna do is, like the last problem, I'm gonna call this one, and I'm gonna call this two. Now this angle that's marked as 100 is also being split, and I'm gonna mark a portion of it three, and the other portion of it four. So there's twice as many of these divided angles because there's twice as many crooks. Okay, so we're probably gonna need three colors at this point. I'm gonna start with orange, just like I did the last time. And I'm gonna focus on the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just color this little piece orange there, make it nice and thick so you can see it. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. And now I'm gonna draw the transversal. That is not a huge success right there. But if I color it, maybe it will be. All right, I think you can see what's going on here. Now, if I point at the angle that's marked 60 and the angle that's marked 1, I see that they're on alternating sides of the transversal, but they're both in the interior regions. Hence, they're alternate interior angles. And we know that if the lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle 1 is going to get a 60. Now, this big angle here, which had been marked with a box, is a right angle. I'll even try to get the box back in there a little. That's a right angle. Now, a portion of that right angle is 60. So the other portion has to make it add up to 90. So the missing portion, the angle marked 2, has to be 30. Because together, the 60 and the 90 make a 30. Okay. Now I'm going to switch colors again, and I'm going to look in the middle section. Now it's going to get a little crazy with the colors here, but we have to do that. That's going to hopefully help us. So I'm going to shade this green, and I'm going to shade this green here, and I'm going to draw the transversal right in the middle. That's a much tra better transversal than the last one. Okay, now, this angle 2 is marked 30. This angle marked 3 is on the alternating side of the transversal as the angle marked 30. So they're on alternating sides, but they're both in the interior region. So these are alternate interior angles. And if angle 2 is 30, then angle 3 is also 30. Okay? Now, let's bear in mind that this big angle down here was how big? I'm going to make it pink again. I'm trying to use the same colors every time so you're getting a sense of what's going on here. This angle here is how big? It's 100. And if a portion of it's 30, we can figure out the other portion by subtracting. 100 take away 30 is 70. So angle 4 is 70. We're almost there, guys. Now for the final angle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to color this blue. I'm going to color this blue. Make it nice and thick so you can see it. And I'm going to put the transversal in here. It's a little bit of a wavy transversal. The angle marked 70, angle 4, is on the same side as the angle marked X. And they're both in the interior region. So this is same side interior. And if two lines are parallel, then the same side interior angles are going to be supplementary. And the supplement of 70 is 110. And again, I just made this up, so you're probably thinking, my gosh, all the answers are 110 in every one of these types of problems. But it really just is a coincidence. I promise you, they're not all 110. Okay, so to review the process, for as many bends as there are in the transversal, you're going to put a dot. Then through the dot, you're going to draw a line that's parallel to the two existing lines. And you're going to be on the lookout for Z's, which are alternate interior angles, or C's, 
same side interior angles, which are supplementary. And I, I'm really hoping that this time the answer is not 110. I promise you, not all the answers are supposed to be 110. So I just made up another one. I made it nice and big, and let me convince you that not all the answers to these are 110. So in this crook problem, we have one bend in the transversal, and it's right here. So I'm going to put a big dot there. Now through that dot, I'm going to draw a line, but not any old line, a line that's parallel to the two existing lines. So let's see. Ah, it's pretty good. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to put some arrows on that line to show that it's parallel to the other two. And I also notice that when I draw this red line, it takes the angle that I've marked X and it splits it up. Many students make the false assumption that it's been cut in half, but it's just been split. I don't know how it's been split, but it's, it's uh, not necessarily in half. So I'm going to call the one portion or the upper angle 1 and the lower angle 2. So the entire angle X is made up of an upper portion 1 and a lower portion 2. Okay, so I'm going to focus on the upper portion right now. And what I'm going to do is draw in the figure that we see so often with these types of problems. So I'm going to make that orange. I'm going to make it nice and thick. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make this orange. Okay, let me just do one more shot there. All right, and now I'm going to draw the transversal. Okay, cool. Let me just go maybe one more time. Okay, great. Hopefully you can really zoom in on the orange that I've just drawn in. Now, the angle that's marked 40 and the angle that's marked 1 are on alternating sides of the transversal. The 40 is on the left, the 1 is on the right. And we also see this Z formation. Okay, and that's a giveaway of alternate interior angles. If lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this is 40 up here, this guy is, this is 40. Okay, now let's move to the bottom of the page. Let's go to the bottom of the page and I'm going to make this green. Okay. And one more pass, and then I'll draw the transversal as best as I can. Let's see how this works out. Oh, awful. That's really bad. Let me just start that again. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. One more shot. Okay, pretty, pretty good. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now I'm looking at the angle mark 2 and the angle marked 150. Now, they live on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the right side, and they're in the interior region. So we would call these same side interior. Now, if the lines are parallel, the same side interior angles are supplementary. The supplement of 150 is 30. So the supplement of 150 is 30. Now, we have to remember that the angle that we're looking for is this angle that's marked X. It's sort of a big angle. I marked it in blue with that arrow. Now I'm going over it again with pink. That angle is made up of two pieces, a piece marked 40 and a piece marked 30. So I know in class I often give you multiple choice. Is the answer 40? Is the answer 30? Or is it both 40 and 30 added together? And the answer is that x is equal to 70. It's both of the angles added together. And look, it's not 110.